Sawsbuck is an underrated Pokemon in my opinion. It has a unique normal and grass typing, along with solid base 100 attack and 95 speed. It also has three solid options for abilities in Chlorophyll, which doubles your speed in Sun, Sap Sipper that boosts attack one stage when hit with a grass move, or Serene Grace which increases chances for secondary effects like flinches. We can run Swords Dance to get a nice attack boost, and Health Recovery with Stab Horn Leech, and Sawsbuck can be a really fun Pokemon. Ladies and gentlemen, what is happening? Welcome back to another Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today, I have a super fun match for you here. Here's in a team full of Pokemon that just do not get the spotlight enough. If you're into that sort of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, it only takes you a second, and I promise you won't regret it. Let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so my opponent is actually gonna go ahead and lead off with the Glaceon. He's got his little boots on, here to party, as I decide to toss out the Mamoswine. So, we're a couple of icy fellas, and yeah, I feel like we should be friends. However, it's gonna turn out this Glaceon does not want to be friends. I'm gonna go ahead and just start off with going for the Stealth Rock. I feel like this thing doesn't have a whole lot that it can do to me, um, but they are actually gonna end up committing the Terra. So, I actually, I don't mind when players go for a turn one Terra. It honestly, it gets it out of the way early. No surprises later on, as they actually end up going for that Terra Fire. So, that tells me there is definitely gonna be a Terra Blast coming my way, but I am definitely faster somehow. We're full of blubber, but we're able to get these legs going. We go for that Stealth Rock here, and they are gonna end up going for the Terra Blast. So. Luckily, I am lead Mamoswine. I'm carrying the Focus Sash, which is why um, I'm not really worried. I'm able to get up that Stealth Rock guarantee, and being faster, I can now hit this thing in return with an Earthquake. So I do kind of have to sacrifice the Focus Sash, but I am fine with that, as they did have to commit their Terra. Uh, it would be nice to keep the Mamoswine around for the Ice Shard against things like the Garchomp later. However, I'm just gonna go for that Earthquake. I honestly kind of expected this to kill here, but as you see, it actually ends up barely living, and then finishes me off with the Shadow Ball. So them switching moves does reveal they're not going to be choiced in any way, so that is actually kind of nice to know. But the swine does go down, and you hate to see it. At least now I can get a switch into whatever I like. And I decide to go into the Delphox here. So the idea behind going into the Delphox is for a couple different reasons. Obviously I know that I can outspeed, and I can finish this thing off with uh, a Psyshock or whatever. But it's important to note that they have a couple different bulky water type Pokemon on their team, and this Delphox is going to draw them in. So I outspeed, I'm able to go for that Psyshock, going to take care of the Glaceon, the Terra is out of the way and no longer have to deal with little boots over here. But I want to bring in one of their water types because I can surprise him with an immediate solar beam. Carrying the power herb, I can go for that one turn solar beam and get some huge damage and also steal their item. So they decide to go into the Milotic. Now this thing can be a couple different versions. I decided to just go for this solar beam. Uh, it is gonna activate that herb while getting rid of my item is gonna open up my item slot to be able to take theirs with our Magician ability. So, I don't wanna fully commit the Grass Terra here just because I know that I can take an attack from them anyway, but the Solar Beam is gonna do a whole bunch of damage and we actually end up stealing this thing's Flame Orb. So that's going to give us some intel about kind of the build of this Milotic. We can see it took it nicely. Also, with that Flame Orb, they're trying to get themselves burnt because of their ability. Marvel Scale is an ability that I believe gives you a 50% boost when you are status, so them not being able to get that Flame Orb is actually super nice for me. It's not going to be as bulky as this build is supposed to be, and it also tells me it's not like a going to be a weird kind of offensive coil set. So uh, they actually just end up going for the recover here. I got the Delphox out, and I bring in uh, the Komala. Now, this is just a weird little log fella, and honestly, I just love using this Pokemon. Uh, we're relatively specially defensive, so I can take a Scald no problem. Also, with our comatose ability, we actually cannot be statused, so don't have to worry about the Scald Burns, and I go for the Yawn there, essentially. Putting this thing on a timer, they can either leave it in, face the consequences of a Sleepy Snake, or they can switch, and I can try to grab myself a position here. So, I'm thinking either they stay in, or they switch into something like the Gastrodon. So, I'm gonna try to make a play here and go into the Sazbuck, as it turns out they're not gonna actually make the play that I expect, and instead we're both gonna switch out. They decide to go into Spiritomb, and I bring in the Sawsbuck. So we got a little bit of a, an awkward first date situation here, and you're not really, we're not really liking what we see, honestly. Sawsbuck comes in, we're like, oh, uh, you don't look, you don't look like your pictures. I'm actually gonna, I'm gonna head out of here. I, I don't want to leave Sawsbuck in here because I know that he's likely gonna have the Will O Wisp. So uh, Sawsbuck actually has a pretty good win condition here, especially with the bulky water Pokemon they have. So I want to conserve that thing, and I'm gonna end up going into. The Delphox. You know, I figure they're gonna go for that Will-O-Wisp. Delphox doesn't have a whole lot of value left in this match. I do come in on that Will-O-Wisp to soak it up, and I, I figure I can at least try to get some decent damage with the Flamethrower. I should have actually clicked Encore, 
uh, making them stuck into that Lily Wisp as they just have the Sucker Punch to finish me off. So I could have clicked the Encore, but with them going for Sucker Punch, it would have gone for that first. And it just it would have been a weird situation. Regardless, I now get a little bit of momentum here, allowing me to switch into whatever I like. And I'm going to go into the absolute OG. Luminion does not get enough love, and that's because this thing is not very good. But he has a little bit of a niche, and I'm able to try to make some, make, make some shit happen with him. So... I go for the Surf here, and they're actually going to end up taunting the Luminion. They're probably like, listen, I don't know what the hell Homeboy's going to do with this thing, so if you taunt it, it seems like a safe play. But <laughs> I get a little bit of chip there with the Surf, and now I figure they probably actually end up switching out here. And that is exactly what happens. So they are going to switch. I decide to go for the U-turn to get a pivot on whatever they bring in, and this is going to give me a nice little position. As it goes into the Gastrodon, I'm feeling great about this because... If I can get in Sazbuck on a matchup that's favorable, I can actually set up a Swords Dance and actually have a decent enough speed to try to poke some holes in the team. So, now is the right time to bring in Sazbuck. It wasn't it wasn't happening earlier, but now we're feeling good and ready to go. Listen, also, if I tell you a fact right now that you didn't already know, you have to click the like button. Did you know the SAWS in Sazbuck is an acronym for the, the names of the seasons? Summer, Autumn, Winter, Spring? Bet you didn't. Now you gotta click that like button and get scammed. So, they decide to end up switching out the Gastrodon as it can be expected. I'm going to end up going for the Swords Dance. That's going to give me a nice little attack boost and put me to the point where I feel like I can knock out this, uh, the Spirit Tomb at the range it's at. So it actually ends up switching in here and it <laughs> knocks itself right down to Citrus Berry range, which is kind of annoying, but we make ourselves nice and pointy and I'm feeling like now is the chance for the for the buck to make some stuff happen. So I'm gonna end up going for that nice little stab horn leech and it is gonna be enough to take care of the spirit tomb which is amazing. So now I'm actually in a fantastic position with the sauce buck. I have that life orb for extra damage but I'm at full health here. I'm faster than a lot of their team and I know that I can take attacks. So they're gonna decide to go into the Lucario. Important to note Lucario is a base 90 speed as I'm 95 so I should be able to outspeed here. I can go for that high horsepower. The best they can do is extreme speed. So I know I can take it. I go ahead and smack the homie with the hooves and that is going to be able to take care of the Lucario. So that is a huge matchup win. And at this point we are out here rolling. I feel like people get caught off guard by like the, the speed and the power of this thing. So it's super fun to use. So now their next best answer is going to be the Garchomp. So Garchomp, if it's a plus speed nature, does outspeed. I figured since they went into Lucario first, it probably is going to be adamant. So it's not going to be able to outspeed here. And my best damage output is to come, go ahead and commit the Terra. So I go for the Terra normal, and that's going to allow me to get a nice little two times boost on the stab of my headbutt. And the reason why we're carrying headbutt is essentially because of our ability Serene Grace. If you're faster than them and you hit him with a headbutt, it's going to be a good chance to roll a flinch. So I put the diamond on my head. They do actually end up outspeeding. Go for that Dragon Claw, which we're barely able to take and a headbutt is going to come through. And with that stab boost, it is actually going to knock out the Garchomp uh, with that Terra. Unfortunately, however, I was uh, I did make contact. The diamond was unfortunately not enough of a buffer to block the you know rough skin. So we do end up knocking ourselves out, but I'm honestly willing to take that versus the, the Garchomp there. Would have been super satisfying had I been faster, um, but we do take care of it regardless. Now, we find ourselves actually in a pretty kind of awkward position, mostly because there are two Pokemon remaining left. Would have been fantastic to have Sazbuck around for. Uh, so I got to make do with what I have left. They have the Gastrodon and the Milotic. So I decided to bring in the Kamala. Now, Kamala I know can take attacks from either of them and put some pressure with Yawn, uh, potentially Body Slam, get some Paras, and just kind of overall just be more bulky than you'd imagine. So. I go for the Yawn here and they hit me with the Earth Power. Actually ends up doing a nice little chunk to the point where I figure maybe they actually end up staying in here with that Gastrodon and allow it to be put to sleep, uh, which honestly I would be fine with. However, I need to start getting damage on these things because my attackers in the back are don't have the greatest matchup against uh, this and the Milotic. So I'm actually going to end up going for the Body Slam here just to get as much damage as possible. But they decided it is not quite time for bedtime, and they're actually going to end up switching that out and go into the Milotic. So I've actually, I've got a tiny bit of chip on this thing, and my main goal at this point is to try to put it in range to where a Crocodile Earthquake uh, can finish it off. So I go for the Body Slam here, it actually does a decent bit, and we actually get ourselves the Para. So it does actually activate this thing's Marvel Scale ability, giving it a 50% defense boost. However, I know that I can take a Scald from this thing, I can't get burnt, and if it actually gets fully paired here, 
Uh, two body slams should knock it out. So I go for that body slam. It does take it nicely, but it is actually going to get fully parried and this thing not having an item. One more body slam should be able to do it. And honestly, I just love to see Kamala actually making stuff happen. We're in a decent range here with the leftover recovery and another body slam is going to be able to finish off uh, the Milotic. So we get a bit of luck on our side with that para. They probably could have gone for something like a recover uh, and been annoying. But honestly, having two bulky water Pokemon with reliable recovery is uh, is just an annoying move anyway. So seeing the Milotic go down, I'm fine with it. And now the final Pokemon being the Gastrodon opens up the opportunity to where this thing, it can't switch out to avoid the sleep. And all I have to do is get enough chip to where Crocodile can finish it off. Or Luminion, however, you know, I can't go for the Surf because of the fact that it's probably water absorbed, so I'd have to Ice Beam, but I go for the Yawn there, and they actually end up going for the Muddy Water, which we are able to take. Kind of overall rude to throw shit water at my Koala, but, you know, we'll, we'll take the disrespect, and uh, all I have to do at this point is give myself a little bit of chip. Listen, I've learned many a time that whenever there's the last Pokemon being Gastrodon, the battle... The battle is not over yet. This thing is, is just so annoying. So I go for the knockoff. What that does is gives me the chip that I'm looking for, but also just limits their recovery with the leftovers. Uh, and that's totally fine. They do finish me off with another muddy water, but all that uh, all that muddy water is going to make dude sleepy. So Gastrodon does fall asleep. And my final two Pokemon should be able to take care of it. I'm just going to actually end up going into the Crocodile straight off the bat. I figure even if it actually does wake up at full health, I, I should be able to at least take one attack from this thing. So... Bandit comes in, and he's uh, he's ready to steal some stuff. And this time, this stuff ends up being Gastrodon's life. Because I go for that Earthquake, and that is going to end up taking care of it. So, that is going to be the end of the match. I really hope you enjoyed the video. I really do appreciate all the support. All the comments and likes are insane to see. And I really thank you guys a lot. I'll catch you next time. Peace out.